This past week, the 79th General Assembly of the United Nations took place with global security crises at the top of the agenda for heads of state that addressed the assembly. On the margins, South Africa participated in several high-level bilateral engagements where security and peace talks featured. President Ramaphosa met with Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky amid an ongoing war against Russia, and Minister Ronald Lamula met with his U.S. counterpart, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. But the question is, has South Africa sufficiently positioned itself into the global reimagination of the United Nations Security Council, following a myriad of calls for the expansion and reconfiguration of the Security Council? Professor of International Affairs at the Tabumbeki African School of Public and in, in International Affairs, Prof. Anthony Vanivakert, joins us to unpack this. Prof. Vanivakert, really appreciate your time this evening. It's always great speaking to you. Perhaps to start here. As we embark on a global reimagination of security, peace, and the multilateral structures built around it, the Security Council remains at the apex of such multilateral bodies. Has South Africa sufficiently positioned itself uh, in the reimagination of that Security Council, having played a significant role as an interlocutor amongst warring states, not just on the continent, but the world over, including Israel and Russia? Yeah, um, good afternoon or good evening, Oliver. It's nice to talk to you again. Uh, the, the quick answer is yes, uh, but it's obviously more complicated than that. Uh, South Africa has served on the, on the Security Council uh, in a rotating uh, seat three times, voted in by the General Assembly um, overwhelmingly, which means that the international community has faith and trust in the South African government and our diplomats uh, to play a meaningful role uh, in the Security Council. But if you take a step back, uh, I would say that um, until the inauguration of the Government of National Unity, when the ANC was firmly in control of the levers of diplomacy for 30 years or so, it, it was a, 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 a very powerful driver of South Africa's foreign policy is to play that particular leadership role in the affairs of the United Nations, not only peace and security, but also development and uh, um, climate and many other issues that the UN stands for or tries to promote. And it, uh, our government has, has carved out a niche as an African government and a, a, a quite a, a prominent member of the Global South in putting issues on the agenda uh, of the United Nations that we can describe as progressive. So, for example, the Palestinian cause, but also uh, the, the principle of peacemaking rather than war making. And I think because of this uh, historical background, uh, South Africa is poised to continue to play such an important role, despite, you know, the, uh, the troubles that the government of national unity seems to be in from time to time. Yeah. Now, of course, it's a contested terrain, especially given the fact that the uh, logic that's going around right now is that if you are to expand the Security Council, it needs to be staggered. We bring in two countries. Now, there are many parts of the world that aren't quite represented, Asia and Africa being yeah. chief amongst those, right? There are many yes. countries on the continent with the diplomatic muscle to be able to out-debate South Africa on the inclusion part. One, one might say Egypt is well-placed as an interlocutor for African and uh, Middle Eastern affairs. Rwanda itself uh, seemed to be able to galvanize the support of the West uh, for its own issues uh, pertaining to regional peace and security. Uh, and South Africa and Nigeria would also, are also contestably uh, some of the most important nations economically when it comes to peace and security on the continent. Where does South Africa stack up against those countries? Yeah, you know, Oliver, I can add to that list, you know, you can add Ghana or Kenya or Algeria uh, as contenders to the throne. Uh, and South Africa doesn't have an automatic right to say to the international community, it is best placed to play this role. And our, our own case has been weakened in recent years under the uh, mismanagement of our foreign affairs by the previous president for nine or 10 years. Um, and, and our standing in Africa became uh, very damaged. It is now the time of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa to reposition South Africa where it was when Thabo Mbeki, our former president, was uh, in the driving seat. Remember his legacy, the positives. Uh, redesign the OAU and make it the AU uh, and make it stronger. Uh, give more meaning to uh, to the to SADC. 
um, a restructure some of the institutions of governance on the on the continent. These are the issues that we've lost a bit and we have to return to them. And I think yeah. uh, President Ramaphosa is well placed to do that. Just a last question and hopefully you can give me a yes or a no answer because we are run, we have run out of time. But does South Africa have the necessary diplomatic and interlocutory depth and range to be able to galvanize and lobby the support of the global community to get that seat? Yes, if, if our government commits the resources, Oliver, then I think we can put together a very good team to play that role. Yeah. Prof. Anthony van Nieuwenkerk, thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. Prof. van Nieuwenkerk is an international affairs expert.